intriguing evening of I-95 in enemy territory against a familiar foe. This prime time affair started off very well for the visitors and they led at the link. But the second half was another story and for the men in white, there was plenty of plight. Hey Jane, early assessment of this game. I know you haven't watched the film, but just an early assessment of this game. Yeah, um, you gotta capitalize. I gotta play better. Um, some throws that I want back, for sure. What to make of the night to forget in Philly? I mean, we haven't uh, lost two straight, so this is new. But, um, you know, for us to be able to get to where we need to get to, we have to be able to overcome adversity. And come on, Cowboys. It's Dallas week. I think we all just got to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, how can we get better uh, moving forward? On this, Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus. The man call somebody, is back, yo. Somebody. We're back. back. Call He's your back. mama, call That's your daddy. We're back and we're back. back. We're back. back. <laughs> Tony oh, McGee. We're back, y'all. We're back. Tony hey. McGee. Yeah. Come on. Tony McGee, Pro Football Plus. Tony McGee, Pro Football Plus. Tony McGee, Pro Football Plus. Welcome to Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus. Now, you know, as we've been coming on for a long time, we always try to tell the truth. And one thing we know is this time of the year where you got about half of your games left, you are one of the people that they're saying has a chance to do something good. So it's not even time to put up a shut up. So when you want somebody to put up a shut up, you go and get a doctor in the house because it must be sick. So we went out and we bought in that Doc Walker. What's up, Walk? <laughs> Hey, man, I'm just good to be in the honor of yours truly, of course, Novena. And I heard that Gary Clark, who's going to, is a regular on the show. Is he still on the show? I oh, you know, heard wait, that. I can get him, man. You know how that is. All right, look, man, I'd be honored. I miss the brother so much. I mean, he's part of the Harris group now. And so that, I, I don't know what happened, but I have not heard from the brother. So I am honored and looking forward to to being able to just reconnect if possible. Oh, but then you know what, Doc, we mess around and bought in the G man, G A. Welcome back, sir. I hope we, we met your, your circumstances of you being uh just thank you for being here. And then your beard looks good, you look good. Thank you very much, you know. And I'm gonna just tell you, my first son is on here, and I'm not giving him to you, <laughs> okay? You be for you being on the show. <laughs> Speaking of my first up, big fella. What's you going on, You and the brothers in the clock. Hey, appreciate being here with y'all as always. I see I lean over your shoulder, brother. You know uh, we, we can. You already it. know. Come on, yeah, you, you already know, know what time it is. You bro. know that. You know that. Yeah. And last but not least, but I did not hold your last down. I figured you got a lot of things you want to say. Ha! You was out there. You're gonna have to tell the move, but hey, don't start that old crap you be doing every every year, jumping on the defense and making them look bad and everything. Right now, we're looking at them as being a team that legitimately has a chance or opportunity to go. So hey, Jane, let's get this started. But you know what? We better be easy on cool on, on, on G Man, because you know he mess around and walk off on it. You know, last show, Doc, we was in the middle. I I look up the brother was he was down there with Magic Johnson and stuff, I guess. Oh no, hey, he was on the show last week. <laughs> oh, he was on the show. Oh, okay. Hey man. He gave us a little time. All right, good. Okay, no, let's get to it, guys. I heard you know, he gave everybody the Heisman. This. Okay, good. Right. Good. We've talked about this a lot. And you know, I think right now and, and Doc and Gary, you both know as well as I do. This is the time you're formulating your thought process about what your team is going to be. You're looking at what injury you, you have or may, may occur, but you're also looking at the way that you can win each and every week. So important right now, and that's why I opened up the show with it. It's time to stop talking about it and be about it now. Am I true with that, Doc? Well, amen. I mean, 
Donna is the closest person I know to the program. And I, I'm impressed. We got a really good team. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, not disappointed because you got to earn it when you play up. And they, they sustained but weren't able to finish. And so the best is yet to come. So I'm just glad to be here. Hey, usually by this time, we're packing up, talking about the draft. And so now we're talking about the opportunity of being in the playoff. So, hey, man, sky's the limit. I just hope that we put our foot to the, to the pedal to the metal against the Cowboys because I know what they're planning to do, and that is dash our dreams. And I don't want that to happen. You're very true with that. And, you know, you know, we had old saying back in the old days, that whenever you weren't going to make the playoffs, you had to sing that song, I'll be home for Christmas. Well, they won't be <laughs> home for Christmas this time. But at right. the same time, they have they have a, a collective number of games which are very important to them. And if you go down the line, they were very astute of you, Doc. Doc I don't know how you found that out. Every no, no, be the text me. No, I don't know how. Cheryl must have told you on the way when you no, were no, opening the door. Just we know yeah. you would have forgot it before you got on the screen, and now you try to come in, act like you're a professor or something. No. Well, well I didn't wife see you. Just I didn't see you. I just the got car. the text. Yeah, we good. When you, when you look at him, and, and he was right about that, G, we can't have uh, going in against Dallas, who is wounded. And, uh, uh, he playing against them anytime. We can't have our number one receiver with one catch, two catches. What's happening there? Um, I just said the offense didn't play as, as good as football as they usually play. Um, a quarterback for the first game of the season had an off game for him. It was an off game for sure. Um, I think what we have to make sure that doesn't happen in this game is, first of all, you can't lose against Dallas, and you can't lose three in a row. That starts a whole nother journey. It goes the other way when you do that. You know, all the confidence they work so hard to build up for the team, it kind of goes away. And all of a sudden now, the belief you had in yourself starts to go the opposite way. So what we need them to do is come back strong, play a great game offensively and defensively, and not give it away at the end. Like, you know, when we tend to lose, we tend to give away, give away the game at the end of the game. We tend to give it away. Either we don't score points offensively or we don't, you know, we don't stop them on defensively. We could be playing a great game defensively, and then all of a sudden, when we need them to play their best defense, they, they let them score. So no matter what that score is, whether it's 15 points or 16 points or 50 points, you know, the key has to be when you call on your crew, they have to come up and they have to win the big games. You know, there's two big games we needed to win. The past past two games were big games we needed to win to really propel us to the next level. So Dallas – we can't we can't lose against Dallas. I mean, it's just oh, it, make the make make the team go on a whole nother trajectory, one hundred percent. So they have to come out, play hard football, play tough football, score a lot of points, and don't let Dallas score. Shit. Well, you know, way to put it, way to put it, G man. <laughs> hey, hey, Donna, when you out there and you looking at, and I know we were talking a little bit about the offense first, but let me ask. I got one question I'm going to ask Solomon so I can lead into the defense next thing. Solomon, do you think that they're playing better as a unit now than any other time that that unit from last year and beginning this year played together? Do you think that they finally, even though they got journeyman on that defensive line, it seems as though that whole defense is playing much better now because you don't have any superstars. You have everybody playing hard. Well, Pops, we're gonna actually be able to see these next uh, few games because they've have they've gotten better and addressed things during the last games we played. As far as like when we played Pittsburgh and then uh, Philly, but now we got to put it all together. So now, like you said, it's time to see what's going on. Where we have to beat Dallas, we have to beat the Tennessee Titans. These are games where last year I'm like Uncle Doc said I was actually scared of these games last year. Where now. I actually feel good that we are a better coach team, and that right there gets us to the next three games, which uh, which should be wins because Dan Quinn has been a great coach for us. Uh, uh, Witt has been doing great for the defense. So I actually feel like we are a way better team than we were last year at this point in time, like uh, Uncle Doc said. 
And you know, that's a good point. And I want to come in you, Don, and I'd say this to, I know you you went in and you spoke with them. But out of all the times I've been around Dan, I just don't understand that call he made when he had an opportunity to go up 13 10. I mean, uh, 13 to 10 or whatever it was. And he went for it on fourth down, momentum switch, everything switched on that. I know it had to affect them. What did you hear in the locker room? Well, Tony, you know what? We're going to go right to the locker room. But as the player said, this is something he's been aggressive of all year. This is not the first time on fourth and one, fourth and two, and all of that in critical situations. He's always, all season long, went through that. But got a chance to talk to Coach Quinn in his, in his presser, and he talks about facing the Dallas Cowboys in this upcoming game before I kind of try to dissect a little bit more of the game, Tony, to help you a little bit. Coach Quinn. And that's in the game, now that you had a chance to really look over everything, what bothered you the most about that game beyond not winning, but knowing this team, what they're capable of doing and what you didn't see? Well, I'd love for us to be able to knock a, a ball or two out. We thought that would be one of the differences, Donna. Could we, you know, get, find our way into the plus in the turnover margin? And we've been strong in that spot to, you know, over the last few weeks to knock a few out to get into the plus in the turnover margin. So not seeing that as strong, um, our tackling and breaking tackles wasn't, you know, at a level that we love. So we keep track of that, of our missed tackles on defense and special teams, how many does Philadelphia have, how many we're creating. And so those are two margins that uh, are strong for us that I'd like to see different in this next game, our ability to tackle and our ability to go break tackles and then our turnover margin. Because to get into the plus, you have to create them. And so we did throw an interception um, in the fourth quarter, but not to have any to give our offense another shot. Um, that's one thing we know we can get. We knocked one out with Quan Martin, but we didn't recover the fumble. And Tony, one other thing is that everybody's asking or talking about is Jaden Daniels hurt. And he is not hurt, Coach Quinn said. He's just lost some time with the offense when he hadn't been able to practice with them. A little bit more about that Philadelphia game. He was under heavy distress. Nobody has talked about the offensive line. They gave up three sacks, but Jaden Daniels was running for his life and the fact that they weren't able to run the ball, only 93 yards running the ball. Good news that Brian Robinson was back in the lineup. He had 63 yards, 16 carries, one touchdown. Um, but when you look at what they were not able to do, what they used to do on a lot of drop balls, something uncharacteristic of this team in that first stretch. So they've got to get better back to executing the way we saw when they were winning. And that's something that Coach Quinn said that he's driving home this week. But, Tony, let's go right back to the locker room to hear what the players have to say after that Phillies game because, let me tell you, they were quite upset. At the beginning of the season, uh, everything's not going to be perfect, um, even though I would want it to be perfect. But, you know, it just comes with, you know, just playing the position. Man, you got to go through some stuff. You got to go through adversity. Um, it's how you respond. So, um, you know, I feel like we'll respond great. Uh, you know, we'll rest up and we'll be back to it. Jaden, you know, he's, he's doing everything he can to continue to make plays and keep us in a rhythm. And so, uh, you know, we got to do everything we can to support him. So get back in a rhythm. Uh, we got a lot of firepower on our offense. We've shown that. We just got to get back on our horse and get back in back in the rhythm. And uh, we'll be right back, right back where we used to be. We won. We just weren't playing our game, man. We just weren't playing like like we usually play. We weren't, we weren't playing our style of ball, you know, from start to finish. So, like, we had a great team, a uh, team that uh, would respond to what we're going through now, um, and we would, we would get back on track. You know, uh, we definitely got to look in the mirror and see what it's going to take for us to, you know, clean up, you know, everything that's dirty right now. But I feel like, you know, we got a you know, great group of guys that uh, take full accountability. Yeah, I'll do that. You know, what I mean, we haven't uh, lost two straight, so this is new. But um, you know, for us to be able to get to where we need to get to, we have to be able to overcome adversity. So we have good guys in this locker room. You know, we have good leaders and everything like that. So it's just a, a matter of uh, getting back to the drawing board. Uh, I mean, we've been doing that all season. You know, what I mean, um, you know, Coach Quinn and Cliff are going to be aggressive, and uh, we just didn't execute the play. Um, so you got to give credit to the defense, but. Um, we've been aggressive all year, um, so it wasn't a shock. I mean, obviously stings for sure. I mean, a division game obviously stings, but I mean at the same time, like we know who we are and we know what we're all about, and uh, and 
you know, we're gonna have a little, you know, 11, day, 11 days right here to get our get our mind, body, soul right. Um, but all the confidence in the world, you know, I mean, obviously, like, you know, it's gotta be better, you know, in uh, some areas, but like, you know, obviously, like, you know, being, you know, better on first and second makes third down a lot more um, valuable. In, in regards of like converting and um but at the same time like it's all 11 it's all 11 us being on the same page and and it's all about converting on third down and you know not not sure exactly um you know what it was but you know we like to you know pride ourselves on you know starting fast starting early get it going and um you know we got to bring that energy up front so um you know my mind goes to you know us front five you know we got to be a source of energy so uh you know that's definitely something to improve on the league is about execution and offensively we just didn't execute at a high enough level to win the game expectations are high one win or one loss feels like five two losses feels like 15 in a row um and so it's just part of the thing when you gotta when your expectations are high for yourself and you're not able to pull it off you're gonna hurt it's gonna sting um and you got to reflect, you got to look in the mirror. These 10 days off are going to be really good for us to look what we've been doing well and what we need to get better at and be able to attack going into the back half of the season. As I said, Tony, Brian Robinson said it best. Clean up what's dirty. And this 10-game break, Tony, probably gave them a chance to really heal up. You know, don't get ahead of yourself. You're talking about too many games now. You got games in front of you that's very important. You can't be talking about what's going to happen down in the future, what's been the game you got now is the only one's important. When you come back, we'll see how the game is. We haven't really talked to, to, to Big Doc a lot, but I know Doc knows a lot about that tight end situation. I want to see how the tight ends out there. And then we're going to go over the league a little bit because the league, not just us, the league is starting to fail a little bit. We'll be back in a moment. Frosted Flakes, good. They're great. 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 They're still great, Grandpa. See? Told ya. <laughs> They're great. People don't know the real story of what happened. It was an unbelievable series of events and an unbelievable time. Their championship was taken away from them in 1969. We are living in their championship now. 50 some years later, good is coming from it. They are impacting state after state after state after state. And we're going to show the world how to love. the big kahuna or the big uh, we, we call solomon everything because that brother they messed around i was one day dominator that's right that's what rick, <laughs> rick saw you know rick i told rick about this story one day i had this brother you know and i grabbed him up because he ain't said something smart and i'm gonna try and call myself picking the brother up off the ground and his feet were still on the ground so that's when i start negotiating a little more speaking of yeah. negotiating <laughs> Well, we, 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 I was asking him about it. Don, I want you to tell me this. The defense, everybody's been concerned with them. But at the same time, they seem to have come together. And I, I've been trying not to say this, but I'm going to say it. At least one of the players that was a first-round Jeff choice that we got rid of, we got players here now that's playing better than he did. And I think that's key to this defense. And they will have to improve. Donna, what did you hear about the defense in the locker room? Because they know they've improved, but I think bringing in Wagner and different people, they still got a couple of places they need to work on. But this could be a pretty, pretty good defense. Yeah, Tony, you're exactly right. Um, you're exactly right. Um, the thing about it is the only thing that I have to say is that the running game, Saquon Barkley had 146 yards. But he did not have that through three quarters, but as they say, it doesn't matter about three quarters, but they held him pretty much in check. 
They ended with 228 total yards. So to me, the running game got away from them a little bit. But this defense has responded and played well. I mean, they really had Philadelphia down. If the offense could have just generated a little bit more, you know, they could have possibly pulled this out. But, you know, you've got to be impressed with the play of the defense. But let's go to the locker room to hear what the players had to say. Still not satisfied, and they know that it's still work to yet to be done. I think we just made our tackles. Um, you know, we were able to get a good beat on uh, some of the things they were trying to do, and, and they, they, they did a good job adjusting. Yeah, I mean, you know, every team, every good team is, is tested at some point, and, um, you know, how you bounce back and how you show resilience is um, your definition of what, you, what team you'll be. So, um, you know, we'll be good. Uh, he's a dynamic man. He's, he's – um, um, a really, really good back, and um, even though you you can bottom up for three quarters, that one play can get them going. And um, you know, I felt like that happened today. I want to remember, you know, for me, um, definitely gonna remember this game. We're gonna see him again, and uh, you know, it's gonna be back to the drawing board. But um, that's where I'm at. Well, man, I don't think we off track. We just, you know, it's just like little plays here and there that you know um, we just need to fix up and get back to the drawing board. So, I mean, there's nothing that you know out of our control, like. We can, everything is correctable, and then, you know, um, like I said, we just got to get back, watch this film. The main thing, getting our bodies right and getting healthy, and uh, you know, get ready for Dallas. Well, uh, props to them; they came out and played, and you know, Saquon. You know, uh, we stopped in the first three quarters, and he kind of found his his niche at the end, and um, you know, we just got to play all four quarters. Your face says everything. Just talk to me about this game. Uh, it's frustrating. Um, we say one in time moments. And we as a group just got to get better in that area. Um, yeah, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Very frustrating. What, what do you think happened out there just overall? Um, we didn't execute game plan as a whole. Um, There's a high standard for everybody there, and um, we as a group just didn't live up to that in some instances, and you have to do it consistently. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. And you go back to the drawing boards and say what to yourself? Uh, you just go back to the fundamentals, man. You, when it's crunch time, man, that's when you really got to fall back to the to the basics of everything. And so, yeah, uh, you watch the film, you, you, you learn from it. Um, just got to be better. That's it. And you know, got to be better is very important. And one thing about it, you can't Love believe that Everybody is saying to you and everything. But one thing I want to ask you, G, from a perspective, I know you're an offensive player or nothing, but on this defense, and I don't want to jump to them too soon, but I got to, do you see a marked improvement in the defensive back? I see they still get beat, but I see a lot of improvement, and I think they may be playoff ready by the time playoffs come. I've definitely seen improvement. I mean, they're, they definitely have improved. I just think that um, if they can carry that improvement on to key moments of the game, like the fourth quarter, when I need to help, when I need to stop you, at the end of the day, when I need to get you stopped, you know, I need to get the offensive ball back. I think that's the only thing that's truly missing. At the end of the day, when I have to stop you so we can win the football game, I think that's the only key element that's missing because they can play great the whole game, keeping people down to 15 points. Because quite honestly, we're supposed to win the game if the team only scores 15, 16, 18 points. But sometimes that doesn't happen. So what can happen is when the defense is playing great three and a half quarters, they can't then play not great the last five minutes of the game, four minutes of the game, let the team drive all the way down the field and then score a touchdown. But they have definitely got a lot better than they have from when they first started the season. Like the defense, I mean, a lot of times the reason why we lose is all offense now, which wasn't the case early on in the season. Yeah, and you know, the thing about it, you said something very true, and I heard them speaking. And one thing about it, it's a four-quarter game. If you can't play four quarters, you're not going to win many games here. So I don't want to hear about how well we did three quarters. If it was a three-quarter game, that'd be great, but it's not. So at the same time, I'm looking at this team. I'm looking at the improvements we see. And, you know, the thing about it is you have to go each game at a time because I, I, I'm just scared of this Dallas game. And, Solomon, you know why. It seems like even when we play, Dallas always seemed to give us a problem. This is a hump game for them. They are right at the point where people around the area 
and people around the country are saying, eh, this could be a pretty good team. They have to prove it right now, Big Fella, do they not? And can they prove it on Dallas? Do you think Dallas can get too hot on them and give them a big problem? Well, all I know is this pop true story, and I think he was part of this, and I think Uncle Doc was too. We played against a team where the great the great Gray Hill went, South Lakes. I put up a good game, gave them 28 and 10. It wasn't enough. They still got into us. Next mm -hmm. game, my father remember we had to play Hernan High School. Yep. They had to see me coming. Then we had to, and I, I whooped them so bad, he left during halftime to go get me another inhaler so I could put another 20 points on. <laughs> then after that, we played McLean. So everybody, after we lost that game against South Lake, they had to see the dominator. I feel that's what we should be able to do. If we get Dallas, if we get the uh, Titans, <laughs> and if we fool around and run off the next, the Falcons, we'll be able to go on and give the Eagles what they've been deserving for a long time. So I really feel like if we can get these three going pops, we good. We good. I, I'm, I'm overlooking the Cowboys. They've always overlooked us. Why are we looking towards them now? They've always played with us. Let's disrespect. It's our time to disrespect now. So I'm I'm looking at that as a victory. I'm already thinking the Titans, the Titans are falling apart. And I think we can we owe Kirk Cousins for some of the things he did here and left our uh franchise in the uh in the uh shambles. Man, I hate I couldn't convince your father. He loved you so much, man. And he knew he should have had a helmet on you. But that basketball thing, it, it was just what a treat it was watching you up on the court. And I'm going, but you was built to right. be on that gridiron because it was a damn shame seeing somebody physically, your mindset, like Jeremy Reeves. When you see a man sitting in a locker like that a year ago, the last four years, they in last place in meaningless games. It's all attitude. All attitude. And it's a frame mm -hmm. of mind. Mm -hmm. You ain't even in the game. We ain't, we ain't got a We ain't busting a great. And yet you can get that angry about something. That is real. Jeremy Reeves sitting in there about to cry, talking yeah. to Donna. That's yeah. real. Yeah. That's that's Alvin Walton. Mm -hmm. That's real. That's Tony Peters. Now, I'm going back looking at people thinking, man, that's nothing fake about that. That ain't no internet. Ain't nobody trying to do no meme. That's real. And that's what DQ and them, that's the environment. I haven't seen anybody like that in the last 10 years in a locker room environment. To that. After a loss against a team that's better than they are. Are you kidding me? That's why I love this group. Hey, Rick, you know what? When I saw him sitting over there and he looked like he wanted to fight, he yeah. look, I, he drew me over there because that is what you want to see. Not only Jeremy Reeds, but when you looked around that locker room and Tony and everybody fake. was talking about before and laughing, you know, after loss. No, Louvre. It was none of, was none of that. They got some dogs in there. I mean, really. I mean, it's like, that's the thing that got me so much. I'm going, wait a minute, hold it. They played up. That's the team that was in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. And they in there devastated because they knew they could have won. I ain't going to say should have, but they could have. And they that's the look of that. That's the group I can lock arms with right there. I haven't seen that in a locker room here. Hell, a year ago, they didn't even know if they were playoff bound or not. The Nitwits didn't even know what was going on. Now they're so in touch and in tune right now. You can just push the chips in on this crew, man. That's impressive. I hadn't seen that. I, I, you know? I, hadn't, I mean, that, that ain't no propaganda. That ain't no promotion. That was real right there. That was That's pure canine. Well, you know, the thing about that, Doc, is you know you are going to have to see that before you will reach the Super Bowl if you ever get an opportunity no to get there. You're 100 percent right, and it turns into everybody has to, everybody has to look in the mirror. Everybody has to take every place here, even the water boy. He brings some warm yeah. water over there, kick him in his behind. And we were crying because we were losing money. See, these kids That's don't what even I'm know talking what it's about. like talking about being broke or trying to make ends meet. They just man, I, I don't even know if I could be mad if I had my bank account as swollen as some of theirs are. That to me was impressive. 
I'm so glad I got to see that. I didn't see that on there. That was that got me juiced up, man. I'm ready to roll now. Well, you know what? I yeah. when I look at him this year, we're gonna take a break right now. When I look at, I played 14 years. Look like I played 13 of them for free. We'll be back in a moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> Frosted Flakes, good. Yeah. Great. 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 You're still great, Grandpa. See, told ya. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> People don't know the real story of what happened. It was an unbelievable series of events and an unbelievable time. Their championship was taken away from them in 1969. We are living in their championship now. Fifty some years later, good is coming from it. They are impacting state after state after state after state. And we're going to show the world our love. As you know, we call this Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus because we try to bring you a little bit of everything. We bring you people that know football. We bring you people that know basketball. We bring you food. We bring you plays. We bring you years. But the one thing we want to let you know, the Sports by Challenge had to come back. It's not the Sports by Challenge anymore. That's what makes it unique. Now it's just a challenge. We're getting people from all over want to get in. So we're starting a new half. For the second half of the year. So if you're interested, get in touch with Donna. You got some good people out there. I had to start with my man, Billy Baines. How's Billy doing in the in the picks? I mean, I know our picks are tight, but it seems better be winning. That's what I'm trying. Hey, you know about yeah. that, Doc. That's right. How's Billy doing? Boy, in Billy Come Baines. On, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. All I know is that I thought that we were competitive. Our group, this crew here on the picks and everything, but this group. They are more competitive than all of us because they want to know. They hit me up this week to say, where do I stand in the picks? And Crystal City Billy Baines is in second place at 11 and 2. Uh, this week, Tony, Sunday night, he picks the Chargers and Monday night, the Texans. I'll and then tell you Tony, what. Don't talk to me about the glory days. You know, I've been doing Glory Days, and that was the first restaurant we went out. They had a place out in Centerville. They had one yeah. well out. We went to two or three of them, and, and the food was always great. But they did well on the picks, too. And I understand that you're telling me, are you telling me Glory Days is number one right now? They they, they doing well. Hey, can you say Glory Days is just like me? We're both in first place. Glory Days, Tony, is 12 <laughs> And one. And you know what the monkey? Hey, 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 you know what the monkey said when the tail and got caught in the fan? You, you won't be long. You won't be there long. Let's not get salty. But Gibbs must not be in this, right? So Clark is not in this, right? He back no, he's out. not in the conversation right now. But oh, the glory okay. days is at twelve and one, Tony. And this week they're picking the Chargers Sunday night, and then Monday night they're picking the Texans. So Tony. Talk to me about Crystal City Pub. Very, and another, I tell you, when I look at them, these, the, those two restaurants together, and they've been with me for years, and I just look at Madden out there, and I, I talk to him all the time, and, and Billy, and every year they've done this, and I tell you what, they are the one restaurant that had done it longer than anyone. They have done, they do very well on it. And I think they really look to, to see the picks they're playing. Now, I would be surprised if he's not up in the top because I know Christian City Restaurant and Christian City Pub have to be up there in the top. Talk to me now. Drink my hey, liquor and talk hey, to me. I'm sorry, Even though the Jim. show ain't over, them Long Island nice teas are waiting. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, Jim, uh, but it's not too late. You're about right there where Gary's at, at third place uh, at nine and four. But it's not you late. 
just like Gary always says, that he's in the midst of things. But nine and four is Jim and, and Crystal City Pub out there. This week, they're taking on Sunday the Chargers and then also the Texans. So, but hey, Kellogg's is right there with Crystal City Pub. Tony, talk to I'm me. I want to tell bit. all of you guys right now that and all the fans. I want you to know that Kellogg, <laughs> we feed the world. And I was born right there. <laughs> hey, hey, Tony, and Kellogg's, uh, they're at nine and four, like I said, tied for third place with the pub. Uh, this Sunday, they picked the Bengals. Sorry about that one. And then also Monday night, they picked the Texans. But Tony, we got one last person to holler and shout in, but everybody is in this race. Um, we're talking about Steel Familiar. Uh, you're talking about Go-Go. They, they're trying to beat their way into first place. Talk to me a little bit, Tony, about them. Now, you got to go to the treetop for that. Let's go to the treetop, man. Tell us a little bit about it. Hey, hey Solomon, uh, Steel Familiar, you know, they are the Go-Go around this town, and they're trying, as I said, to beat their way back into contenders. But they're right there, to, uh, Solomon, because... Sunday night, they picked the Bengals, Monday, the Cowboys, and they're at seven and two. But talk to me, Tony and, and Solomon, about the Go-Go's. Well, first of all, still familiar with the great Go-Go band in the D.C. area. Also want to give a shout out to the D.C. Museum of Go-Go to just open a day. Big ups to y'all. Yes, familiar, yes. Especially in that. In yeah, that that's awesome. Gym. But if you are a band that's interested, like I said, reach out to us. We can get you down too, and you can start picking, and it's not too late. And Tony, right. it's all heating up. And talking about heating up, and thanks for all of our restaurants that the sports challenge, because you have plenty of games to try to take that top spot. But talking about top spots, let's go around the NFL a little bit and uh, Rick, I'm talking to you right off the bat because the Ravens and the Steelers went at bat. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Ravens, for me, did not show up offensively or Pittsburgh's defense just took them out of that. But let me tell you, Pittsburgh has won their last five games. They're at nine and two in that division. And it's not over yet. But they scored six field goals to win against a Ravens defense. But it's just like, to me, uh, the Ravens didn't show up offensively. Talk to me about how you see that group. Russell Wilson, 23 of 26, 205 yards. He was sacked four times. Doc, what do you see with these two teams? Well, two confessions. Uh, I took the Ravens, and that'll, ha that'll never happen again. Because <laughs> Pittsburgh. Hey, hey, Doc, like that, man, baby. That'll never you. happen again. Nine straight times, and I said, you know what? I'm going. I'm going with the crows again. I, this is the time. I'm done. Black and gold. I had to swallow my pride with Big Tony. Never again, ever, ever again will I go against black and gold. But I did it, and I take it like a man. And um, so, so be it. But it was good football. I loved it, man. It reminded me of the old days. It was '70s football. And I just could not get enough of it. But I did take the bill over the Chiefs. So how you like that? Hey, I love that you said that. I love that you said that, Rick, because I'm coming to Tony with that game because Kansas City, there's no undefeated teams in the NFL any longer because the Bills up in Buffalo knock off Kansas City. And Tony, six straight games for this Buffalo team that they won. Uh, I mean, right off the bat, they create a turnover with Mahomes, turn it into a touchdown, Buffalo go up. But talk to me about the Buffalo Bills and this team and what you're seeing from them and talk a little bit on Kansas City or where you see that team. I think that you're seeing is not, what you're seeing is not a mirage. This is each and every year, Kansas City has to get by Buffalo to be a champion. And Buffalo has always been one person, one player, one play away. This year they go out and get help. They take, they're telling their quarterback, don't take as many chances. They go in and bring in new receivers. They go in, their offensive line is already averaging six foot seven. That's, that's Solomon's hype. They big and their defense is good. But one thing I keep telling you guys and you fans, I want you to look at it. 
when you're in the off season and I mean in the playoff season and you're looking at a team when anybody had to play in Buffalo and, and everybody every player that's they're sitting on that stage right now I tell you Gary as well as Doc hey man I tell you what that's one of the toughest places to play not just because of the the the, the players but because of the snow so I look at them as being the odds on one of the odds on favorites. I'm like Doc about them other guys. I'm not <laughs> even gonna say their name. They up in Maryland. I done put all my time in on them and they go out there and stick it up every time they get a chance. What was the last question you asked me? You know I'm you know I'm old. I can't remember. I was everything. talking about Kansas City, how you see Kansas City. Okay, I, I see Kansas City as they where they are. And they get, now they got two lovers on the team and one superstar woman. So you're gonna have to see who get the most the most cred there. But at the same time, as long as you have a quarterback as you have on there, uh, the, the lightweight goat, they got a chance. But this is the one team that they were getting by, barely getting by, and this team improved himself enough. Kansas City ring is over. You heard me say it first. Hey, Tony, it's funny you say that. Kansas City, up until that game, seven times in the fourth quarter, they had come back, but not that. Solomon, I'm coming to you. Everybody is talking about the, the uh, Buffalo. They're talking about Baltimore. They're talking about Pittsburgh um, and then Kansas City. But no one is talking about the Detroit Lions, who just seem to be winning, winning, and winning. Solomon, they put 52 points up against the Jags. I mean, I know it was the Jags, but still 52 points. But guess what? NFC leading 9-1 and one Detroit Lions, eight straight games and nine of their last 10, first place since 1934 that they've done this. Talk to me about the Detroit Lions because nobody is really talking about the Detroit Lions that, to me, is one of the best teams in football, if not the best. First of all, I got to say it to the 313. What up, though, to all my Detroit people? Also, happy birthday to my man, Ian Fresco Thomas from the 313. I'm feeling good about Detroit. They have a great coach. They have a great offense, great defense. Even this team is good. And like I said, with their running back combination of having power and then having speed, they're going to be a tough out. They're actually where I see the commanders being pretty soon, just because of the leadership that Dan uh, Campbell has brought in. Now, we may get there a little bit faster because, like, everybody thought it was going to be a rebuilding year for us. When we watched Dan Campbell rebuild that team, where we actually maybe could rebuild and win at the same time. But I got to give it up to the Lions, and I'm feeling good about them. Like, like uh, Gary said, I feel like that may be the team that we have to see at the end to go to where to the next level we want to go to. Hey, Gary, I'm going to finish up with you as far as the San Francisco 49ers. Everybody thought that they were getting back on track. They maybe lose uh, Nick Bolser to a hip injury. Um, but they they lost in the one. last minutes to Seattle. They had that game almost won. How do you see the 49ers, which Tony always talks about, but I think that that not should be talked about too much now. Yeah, well, that was Tony's team coming into the season, but. Uh, oh, wait, Gary, when did your memory get to be so good? Now, you wait a minute. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I don't really want to talk you about You are over it. Why you giving me, like, the worst team that. to talk about? You don't, don't talk even about. know about I didn't give you the worst team to talk yeah. about. That would have been that would've... Why don't want to talk about San Francisco, for? <laughs> I'm going to talk about Kansas City and Buffalo. I'm going to talk about Kansas City and Buffalo. I'm going to go back to that game. You guys are on crack if you think Buffalo beats Kansas City in the long run. Oh, oh, I all said, all I Buffalo said that gives game, Kansas City off for the playoffs. That's all they did. Yeah. Uh, they I they upset for the playoffs. Because you know, that. when you beat that boy during the regular season and people start yeah, talking the way you guys are talking right now, yeah. he comes oh, back man. and he takes it personal. He takes yeah. it personal and he wipes them yeah. out. Wipes them out. Yeah. He's already been saying that he ain't putting up the numbers that he been usually puts up. You know, he's playing okay. You know, the defense is – come on now. All y'all doing, doing is trying to make Kansas City go back to the Super Bowl again. Just leave them alone and maybe they won't go back to the Super Bowl. No, I'm with you. I'm alone. with you. Hey, if I had known Trent Williams didn't play, I took Frisco. I lost up in Seattle. But I didn't know Trent didn't play. Had I known Trent was out, I'm out. I didn't get that memo till late. I'd have bailed out of that thing. 
Hey, hey, Tony, hey, we, Tony, we like to keep this going, but we got to go to a break, Tony. Take us to a break, and we will come back maybe and have time to. Okay, uh, as we go out for this break, Solomon, with, with Gary and them betting the way they want to bet, that Maybach that you wanted, we got it. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Frosted Flakes, good. They're great. 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 They're still great, Grandpa. See, told ya. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> People don't know the real story of what happened. It was an unbelievable series of events and, and an unbelievable time. Their championship was taken away from them in 1969. We are living in their championship now. Fifty some years later, good is coming from it. They are impacting state after state after state after state. And we're going to show the world how to love. Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus Speakers Bureau offers you various opportunities to connect with former and current players along with Tony and the crew. For more information, go to redmagplus.com Speakers Bureau. Yeah, one of the things, one of the ways that we use to get his hip stronger is this device right here, this little board. It's really cool, I love it, it's a nice stretch, and you can elevate it as you need, as you see fit. He's going just like this. Bring it right in front of him, toes up, up and around, up, up. And as you get comfortable with that, you elevate it, and you see how high you can go. Uh, he needs to be doing this, not me. <laughs> but that's one of the ways, a great way I love, and it's a good stretch too, that helps your hips. Another way is when we do, uh, I'm starting to have my hurdles, but we can do bounding over that. We go, hey, skip, over it, over, over. That's one of the drills too, but we don't have it right here. Um, and then again, the other one is just the high knees, the cycling with the uh, ankle weights on, constantly just cycling, 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 cycling. cycling really working on his hips until he can't go no more. As you saw, he kind of fell off a little bit because he got tired. That's when the hips get tired. And we go back and start again and see how far we can go. Well, Ricky Irvin's with another great fitness tip. And for all of you people out there that has tight hips and you need to learn how to stretch them, Ricky just gave you key pointers and specifically you, Tony. I know it. I tell you what, people ask me, how you look like that and you got somebody doing exercising on your show? <laughs> I'm coming back. Oh, no. But you know what? Y'all were okay, so... Mike Tyson. <laughs> hey, right. Hey, right. That, that kind of money he got, I'll, I'll give it a try. <laughs> hey, hey, Tony, y'all were so heated up that we have to continue going around the NFL because let's talk about the Minnesota Vikings. They beat up on the Titans even though they turned the ball over twice, uh, how do you see the Vikings right now, Tony? I mean, are they pretenders? Even with 13 penalties that hurt t the Titans, I think that's what hurt them, 13 penalties for 91 yards. But how do you see the Vikings right now and Kevin O'Connell's team? They're in a good place. And, and in the division they're in, other than Detroit, they're the best team. And I think they have an opportunity to get in, but they're just like they always been. They're going to come up short. That's just the way it always happened. But the Vikings are a pretty good team. Quarterback is very – he's very uh, good for being a young quarterback. We got a lot of that. But at the same time, they're just pulling their parts together. And uh, they are going to go into the playoffs. They will not be there long, though. Hey, hey Rick, Green Bay Packers, uh, they beat the Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears – Far their offensive coordinator and Caleb Williams seem to be playing a little bit better. They they had a shorter game for him, but Green Bay barely beat uh, Chicago on the closing field goal. How do you see those two teams? Because nobody is really talking about Green Bay, but uh, how do you like Chicago in the stretch also? Well, the Bears are cursed because <laughs> Mike Bird, Mike Bird falls a bit. They, they, I mean. They got the curse of, of the bird, man. So <laughs> stick a fork in them. Now, granted, we almost lost to them. So, uh, and Caleb's a terrific talent.
but it takes more than talent. And you can't hold the ball the way he holds the ball mm-hmm. unless you have an offensive line that's the best in football. Mm-hmm. And they just don't have that yet. They got a lot of talent, but they're just dysfunctional in, a, in many ways. They'll get it worked out. Green Bay's where you want to be, young and talented. Yeah. Under the cap, sky's the limit. Mm-hmm. And, Gary, I'm coming to you again with uh, a team that, like you said, don't win. But they have been winning as of late. The uh, uh, New Orleans Saints got Derek Carr back. They won two back-back games. And, you know, they fired their coach a couple of weeks ago, and they seem to have been winning. Is the Saints, is it too late for them? Or do you see them, um, you know, making some noise in in that division? I mean, it really depends on where they are with the division wins to division losses. I mean, they don't have – they got a lot of losses, but not, they can come back and make a run for it. You know, you win two games, next thing you know, you win three games. Just like, you know, we got two losses, next thing you will, we don't want to get get three losses because then it flips the other way. So right now, it looks like they're building upon it. So, yeah, I think the Saints still have opportunity. Why not? Hey, hey, hey Solomon, um, Gary didn't want to talk about the 49ers, so I'm bringing it back to you because they are one in three in the NFC West. He doesn't want to talk about it either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. Because <laughs> this is a team to me that's going through uh, some struggles right now. It's not the same San Francisco team because they've lost some key people. But how do you see them and also Seattle, who's starting to talk a little bit? Because I think this week Seattle have the Cardinals. Uh, Seattle is five and five. The Cardinals are six and four. How do you see that game between those two teams? And just talk to me a little bit about San Francisco. Well, I feel like the the game between the Birds and Seattle and the Cardinals that's going to be a great game. That's just going to depend on quarterback play. If whoever's going to start this game. As far as San Francisco, let's stick a fork in them. They just like we like our steaks. They're done. <laughs> <laughs> Them giving up AP was the biggest thing. Thank you for giving us AP, the guy that goes out and gets great corners like Lattimore last week, the same kind of player that he would have got for you guys. So appreciate you, San Francisco, for that. But they're done. But I feel like uh, Seattle and the uh, Arizona game is going to be a pretty good game. It all depends on the quarterback play on that game. Okay, I'm going to throw these games out to everybody, starting with you, Tony. The Vikings at the Bears, who do you like? Vikings. Rick, <laughs> come on, Don. Is that a trick question? Okay, the Vikings. I'll say air versus the Bears. Yeah. Hey, Gary, <laughs> the Vikings at the Bears. The Vikings. And Solomon. This is for my father and Bobby Douglas. I'm taking the Bears. <laughs> and the Patriots <laughs> at the Dolphins. Dolphins. Rick. Panthers, Panthers, Dolphins? Yeah, the, the, yeah, yes. The Patriots Tua. and the Dolphins. Oh, Tua. And Solomon. This is for Stanley Morgan and Tony McGee and the great Sugar Ben Hamilton. I'm taking the Patriots. And let me Lord, just throw this mercy. in. The Giants played the Bucks. The Bucks are at the Giants. The Giants have demoted Daniel Jones to not second quarterback, third quarterback, and DeVito is the starting quarterback. So, Tony? It's in your hands now. Bucks. Bucks have lost a few games. One of our boys is there. They're going to be all right. So yeah. take us out, Tony. I tell you what, it's been a good show. Hey, guys, thanks for coming on. Come a little bit later. Oh, we no, really Tony, good. you got another segment to go. You just oh, take well, then you would, don't be saying take us out. Now you're trying to put me on the wrong screen. Uh, Where's right Novena? I'll be back <laughs> She go over here rolling their hands. Hey, fans. Oh, I just don't why, know. Why would you Home do that? Homeboy's getting handcuffed here. We'll be back in a moment for a minute. <laughs> Frosted Flakes, good. They're great. 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 They're still great, Grandpa. See? Told ya. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> In the Minute with Tony and Donna. You can catch them weekly on their podcast, and you can also subscribe to their YouTube channel, In the Minute. People don't know the real story of what happened. It was an unbelievable series of events and an unbelievable time. 
Their championship was taken away from them in 1969. We are living in their championship now. 50 some years later, good is coming from it. They are impacting state after state after state after state. And we're going to show the world how to love. One thing about the final gun, you never replace camaraderie. It's irreplaceable. We can't go back in time and put those helmets on. Just take a look at Tony. That'll tell you all you need to know. But we can do this a lot longer as he takes us out to break. And you know what we have to do to look at you? We got to go back and find some pictures of people on the bench with the water. And we'll see all we need to know. And I tell you what, fans, you may hear me and Rick joke around and everything, everybody here. But one thing about it, everybody that you see on this stage know what it takes to be a champion. We're just hoping, we're just hoping that Washington understands that too. So that's why we are not going to say, and I've been trying to do it for the longest, but we never say goodbye. We never go with false truths. We know what we got to do, and we'll say we're doing it in the minute. In the minute.